All right. So we've got a game in the note boom, and this is actually kind of an important game because it illustrates so many cool ideas that are like really important for those of you who are playing the triangle system. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, just a quick note: if you check the link below, uh, you'll find you'll find a link to the analysis for the game with additional comments, written descriptions, blah 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 blah, more lines than I actually cover in the video. So uh, let's kick things off. So, uh, so this is the like the kind of the penultimate point of the game. This is where things got to. And those of us playing the note boom, if we could get to something like this, that would be phenomenal. There's only a few moves left in the game. The game is almost completely crushing. So we've won this extra pawn, and we're going to get to keep it. Sorry, not the queen. And But there's a cool tactical finish here. And it's just rook takes, and then after takes, we take with the queen, and we've severed the connection here from this rook. So just a really exciting finish to this game. And this is exactly what we're the kind of thing that we're hoping for. We force the queens off the board. We're going to make her queen. Everything is phenomenal. So let's step back and figure out how did we get to this position? Because this is exactly what we're aiming for when we're playing the triangle is this sort of an end game. So kick things back off. Uh, this game started from an English move order, uh, but then transposes right back into this D4 uh, uh, note boom. We take, of course, now A4, and we go ahead and put this pin so that we can try to support this A5 move. So E3 comes, and this signals usually that white's going to try to get the pawn back. When they play E4, they're usually not trying to get their pawn back and instead going to go on an attack. Uh, so we play b5, which is the whole point of uh, why we play bishop to b4. I just want to demonstrate the actual tactic here. The point is that we take, we take, and when they grab back, now we can grab back with the pawn. This is kind of an important point because uh, we're going to see a situation where that actually doesn't work. So this is, uh, I got into this line myself, and bishop to e2 was played, and now bishop b7, and then castles. And in the game, um, I was just relying on this tactic kind of blindly. And I played knight to f6, uh, just thinking, okay, fine, you'll take, I'll take, and we'll get the same sort of thing. It doesn't matter. I don't want to waste time on a6 because I want to play a5 later. Well, after takes, and I just willy-nilly snap this move off the board, well, I get hit with this in-between move. So it's important to note that once we've put this bishop on b7, actually, uh, there's a new kind of threat that white is threatening to again take on b5. And so after b takes, uh, they took my bishop. I played queen to d5, trying to make things interesting, put some pressure here. Uh, this bishop's going to come out. I'm not going to be able to castle. Uh, but I thought, if I just castle, uh, they're going to take this pawn. This guy's passed. And this looked like a painful position to have to play. I've given up the bishop pair. So I played queen d5, bishop a3, and then I played g5 and really tried to like mix things up and make the position crazy. I went on to lose pretty quickly. Uh, so I went hunting for a better way to handle this game. And I found in this position, uh, a6 is a pretty natural move. Nothing too exciting here. And now queen to d7. And now knight to d7. The point is, is that we're trying to stop this knight to e5. Uh, white really has two sort of ways to try to counter us on the note boom. Uh, they can play b3, sort of forcing us to take. And then they put pressure down the c file and generally on the queen side as a whole. The other idea is to play e4 and uh, e5 and try to attack us on the queen side. And this game, it seems like that white started off with sort of this queen side idea, because they're going to, uh, sorry, they wanted to play this queen side idea, because that's what queen c2 is all about, is so they can play c3. But then they kind of like switch gears. Um, knight f6 is actually playable, and I maybe slightly prefer it allowing e5, because just castles and bishop f3 looks scary to me. But it's really not a problem, because uh, we can play queen to b6. Now they play b3, which is sort of their whole idea. But if takes, 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 uh, we get a5, and we're going to get c5 at some point in the near future, and we've already created this pass pawn. This is a pretty nice position. But if you don't want to go for something like this, knight d7 is what's played in the game. And now after castles, knight g6. Now we just transpose back to exactly what I showed before, except for now knight e5 wasn't a possibility. So bishop to g5. Uh, and white's idea often is they want to play e5, and they want to play knight to e4, and they want to go plant a knight on d6, and then they want to go crazy on the king side, uh, which is one of the reasons why it's a little bit strange they play queen c2, because that's really the c3 idea. The queen's often happier on this square because it can come out to this diagonal somewhere. Uh, so h6, kicking it back. And now the first sort of instructive point. Uh, we, want, we don't want to ever take here. I say we don't want to ever, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, we want to bring the bishop back to e7. It not only breaks this pin, uh, but it keeps the knight, the bishop making sure that we're going to be able to defend this d6 square, uh, which is countering this idea of e5, knight d5, and captures. 
And we're also preparing to meet e5 with knight takes. Now, it was also possible instead to play queen out to b6 with some similar ideas, uh, but I actually like this bishop e7 retreat. So, uh, and there's a point to it, we'll see. Because after knight d5, uh, takes, takes, and we've got to move our queen to a nice square. This e7 is actually really nicely positioned. We're out of the way of any wildness of the rooks here after c3 and things open up. And, but we're still supporting c5, which is our main break that we want to get so that our bishop is open. Uh, so this idea of dropping the bishop back to maintain control over d7 and is forcing this exchange of dark square bishops and improving our queen is maybe the first sort of instructive key point that I think we need to take away from this game. So knight e4, castles, and knight d6, which when they get knight d6, like this feels really awkward and also feels like they're going to take our bishop. And I used to be really, really worried about that. And like, ah, I don't want to give up this bishop. It's beautiful because one day I'm going to play c5 and it's going to deliver, help me deliver a checkmate on b2 or g2. That's probably not actually going to happen, like ever. And uh, at this point, we would love for them to capture here. Uh, so knight seven to b6. And I really like this idea as well. The point is we're just going to go back to c8 and we're going to trade off this knight. This knight is a monster and we got to get rid of it. So this maneuver of bringing the knight from b7 to b6 and back down to uh, c1 is a really instructive idea. And definitely the second thing that you should take away from this game is really important. So knight to d2, and we're going to immediately get another really key idea, and that's f5. Now, we can get away with f5 because they can't really take en passant because the knight hangs. But what's the point of f5? Why do we want to play this? Well, what was white's idea? They knew that we're going to bring this knight and capture here, and they wanted to put a new knight on e4 and then replace the one before. But now with f5, we've taken away the e4 square, and there's not going to be a knight on d6 for much longer. This knight is going away. Uh, so this uh, idea of trying to attack on the king side, which is what white was initially sort of trying to do, is shut down now. It's over. Uh, I mean, g4 is kind of ridiculous. f4 doesn't really seem to do very much. And we're just going to continue our plan, get rid of this guy, and then we're going to play c5. And maybe we really will get a checkmate on g2. We can already see the queen can come out. Like, this is already starting to look kind of good. Uh, so b3 comes. And, like, so many cool ideas in this game already. Because most of us would be tempted to just capture. Uh, but so white switch back to this queenside plan, but it's too late. It's not going to work anymore. Just c3. And that's the other thing that this uh, f5 square did is it really cements this knight and makes sure it's going to stay here. It's not easy to attack this. You can try to come give the bishop for it. But remember, we have a knight defending the square already. And this is a pass pawn that's not going anywhere. And we can almost certainly be able to defend it with an additional pass pawn. And this is exuding tremendous problems for black, or sorry, for white. The knight needs to go to f3, which means the bishop can't. I mean, the knight can try to come back here, but then we'll play b4, and then that knight's never moving again, and neither is this rook for that matter. Uh, so knight f3, and now knight c8, just swapping out, captures the bishop, no big deal, and a5. As so I suppose the point of a5 is that it wants to stop us from playing a5 and then b5 and creating this monster chain here. The queen to e7 back, we still want to play c5 at some point. We still want to play b4. And we just have this protected pass pawn that, like, there is no way that white is ever going to manage to put any significant pressure on that pawn. Just rook fd1, and we're just going to play naturally. Just improve our pieces, knight e1. Now we play c5 immediately. Perhaps this was a bit rushed. Uh, perhaps it was better just to bring the rooks in and then support that, or maybe put the rooks on d1 and c8 and then play c5, because then when the position opens up a little bit, our rooks are already a little bit better placed. But perhaps he was worried that knight to d3 would come, threatening knight to c5. We can't allow a knight to set on c5. So c5 immediately, the bishop comes trying to trade, uh, but now we just capture, and now the bishop takes. And this is one of the reasons why I kind of prefer playing rook d8, because now we could take back with the rook, and this guy would be protected, and we would have connected pass pawn, two connected pass pawns, defended by anchored by this pawn here. So I, that's one of the reasons why I like bringing the rook in a bit sooner, but this is still just as good. So the knight comes. It's not going to get to c5 anymore. That's not a great square. Uh, now we bring the rooks in, and the rooks come across. We're just improving slightly, and the finish is pretty technical. You can start to see how all of this unfolded to get to that position we looked at when we first started out. Queen to d3. 
And uh, this pawn is invulnerable because there's uh, backmate threat problems. And they're renewed now. The queen came to d3 so that they could come back to f1. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, uh, I lied. The rook's going to come to that square in a moment. f4 comes, we drop back, and now the rook comes back, renewing the problems that we have. Uh, g3 doesn't matter. Rook to c4. Rook c4 was possible several moves earlier. This king h8 was like perhaps overly prophylactic and unnecessary, uh, but didn't hurt anything. And this pawn is still survived. It looks like that it's totally swarmed, but you can't really capture it. Uh, after rook takes the d5, now the queen comes across. And after rook e1, we see the position we ended with. Uh, just such a cool game. So clean. Showed really easy ways to combat some of white's main ideas of putting this knight onto d6 uh, with the e5 maneuver. And uh, this idea of playing c3 when that's available and getting this really cleanly cemented knight on d5. Super awesome game. And uh, I really hope that you guys enjoy it and that you're able to take something away from it. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you guys around. Uh, as always, take a moment to subscribe, leave me a comment. All of those things really mean a lot to me and super motivate me to keep doing these. Bye-bye.